Hauk and says, hey, I'm injured in Toronto. Can you send somebody to help me out and help take care of Oberon? Um, maybe Owen can do it. So Owen goes. It's hilarious, his interactions in the modern world, and especially a place he's never been. Uh, but Owen goes, grabs Oberon, rescues or kidnaps Atticus from the uh, from the hospital, and takes him to Tirnanog, well, actually to Maumel, to heal up from his injuries and all this stuff, and uh, gives him. I think I think just one of the stakes from Lukta and sends him on his way. Well, while sitting in the pools in Maumel, the healing pools of Maumel, Atticus is visited by the Morrigan, who still hangs on to some level of existence and uh, life, so to speak, because of people who continue to pray to her. But she goes to visit him and she says, look, you gotta go save the Dark Elves. They're about to be mass murdered by the Alfar and, and the Aesir. So you gotta go merely prevent genocide. You don't have to create a lasting peace, but you've gotta merely prevent genocide. And Sheehan goes, or Atticus goes, all right. <laughs> because he's he, he knows not to fuck with the more again. So he goes, he talks to Bree and says, look, we've gotta, we've gotta prevent this thing from happening. Can you help? And Bree says, okay, meet me here tomorrow. So he's got some time on his hands. He goes back to um, to England, where, if you'll recall from the end of Hunted, uh, Diana, the Roman goddess Diana, is still buried. But he goes there. He summons Hermes to summon Jupiter so that they can talk to her and see if she's ready to play nice. Turns out she is. But as soon as she is repaired, her you know, as soon as Atticus brings up her body and, the, and Jupiter puts all her parts together, she turns around, sees Atticus, and immediately starts charging him, which breaks her promise to play nice. So Jupiter obliterates her with a lightning bolt. Atticus and Oberon are covered in Icor, which is deadly poisonous to both of them. And uh, Jupiter says, I'll take care of Diana. Don't worry about it. She's going to respawn on Olympus, but I'll take care of it. She won't hunt you down. I'll make sure of it. And Atticus is kind of dubious about this, but he's like, all right, fine. So he shifts back to Tempe, or not Tempe, to Flagstaff, where he asks uh, Sam and Ty of the Flagstaff pack, hey, can we take a shower? They're not happy about it because now this trail of Icor from a Roman goddess leads to their doorstep. But, okay, what else can you really do? So they let him clean up and they take care of Oberon while Atticus goes off to Slartolfar, the home of the Dark Elves, to prevent them from all being killed. He and Briad go do this. Um, the short version of this story, because I don't have a lot of recording time, is that they manage to make a lasting peace, but it kind of turns out that this whole exercise of marching on the Dark Elves was mostly Odin's sneaky, nefarious way of getting the Dark Elves to side with them in Ragnarok. Wasn't really about necessarily making peace, but if the peace comes about, all right, groovy. But it was mostly he didn't want the Dark Elves having the option to side with Loki. So after this, Atticus goes back on back to Tempe, or not Tempe, fuck, back to Flagstaff to pick up Oberon and starts thinking again about, okay, well, what do I do about the vampires? And Oberon says... Well, why don't you take out the biggest, strongest guy and the rest of them will fall in line? Because everybody's just doing what Theophilus said, says, so why not take out Theophilus? And Atticus goes, ha, huh, great, let's do that. So he, using Ty's phone, he calls Leif Helgerson to say, where's Theophilus? Leif has now been 
ostracized from the higher ups of vampiric politics and only has a hunch that he's hanging out in Prague. So Atticus goes to Prague where Theophilus is supposed to be staying at this specific hotel. And quickly he learns that he's just walked into an ambush because of Werner Drasha, now free from Toronto police, probably with the help of vampires, is hanging out there and starts shooting at him. So Atticus goes, kind of goes back and regroups, says, you know what, I need somebody to track this guy down. Why don't I uh, see if I can get Flittish to do it? And so he uses his Irish Blarney talking skills and talks her into it. And she tracks down the vampires to another hotel in Berlin. And now with the help of his magical stake, he uh, kills a bunch of vampires in Berlin. A lot of them old, but none of them Theophilus. After this epic thing happens... Um, he then goes back to his Tyromancer friend to see if she can help him divine where Leaf will be so that he can confront Leaf. She tells him he's in France. So he goes back to France, finds Leaf, cheese be praised, I guess, and they discuss some of this shit, but eventually they sort of have it out because there's still a lot of hard feelings, especially in Atticus's part. He's felt like he's been betrayed repeatedly by this guy, and he doesn't really like him. But he knows if he takes out Theophilus, Leif Helgerson will now be the most powerful vampire in the world and will at least leave him the fuck alone. <laughs> And so he goes, okay, Leaf, where's Theophilus? And Leaf says, again, I don't really know, but I'm pretty sure he's in Rome. All roads lead to Rome. So here we are, Atticus, Granuel, and Owen are in Rome. So they sort of stake out where these vampires could be hanging out and what sort of security and thralls and shit they have kind of protecting them. And then Atticus calls up his rabbi buddy in Toronto and says, Hey, can you get a bunch of hammers of God out here to help us fight off these these vampires? Because the vampires are utilizing Rosicrucians, which are kind of like similar to the Kabbalists, but they're not. I guess it's like east side, west side sort of rivalry. And the rabbi says, All right, groovy. So I'll be here tomorrow. Well, I'll be there tomorrow. So they sort of hang out for a, a night or whatever and meet up with the hammers of god in this big square in in rome and battle it out with rosicrucians and vampires and thralls and again long story short the druids win because that's how it goes right you don't fuck with a druid and you especially don't fuck with owen oh my gosh Anyways, so upon winning this battle, Atticus, Granuel, and Owen sit down with Leif, who has written up a treaty between the druids and the vampires. Uh, most of the terms involve like, hey, look, we'll leave you alone, you leave us alone. And some of the terms involve evacuating all vampires from Poland because Atticus, it may take him some time, but he always keeps his promises. He promised the sisters of the three Auroras he'd do that. And um, he fucking did it. It took him longer than he expected, but he did it. And then Owen says, keep him out of Arizona so I can train up my druids, my apprentices, and keep him out of Ireland because that's my home. And so they put that. And then Granuel says, last thing. Before I sign this, you have to tell me, do vampires poop? <laughs> and that was the only time that they could ever get that answer. This is sort of a running joke through the series, is that they, they don't know how vampiric bodily functions work, and Leaf won't tell them. But it is in this moment, when this treaty is about to be signed, that they finally get their answer. <laughs> and it is hilarious. So, 
treaty signed, lasting peace created. They all go back to their respective places. Granuel and Atticus have now bought a cabin in Oregon. Granuel is sort of commuting, druidically, I don't know if that's a word, from Oregon to Poland, because, like I said, she's learning Polish. And she's, so she's working at a bar to really immerse herself in the language. And Atticus starts, um, I think, selling some herbs and stuff out, out of the cabin. And Oberon and Orla, the two wolfhounds, start getting it on. And so the story ends with, we find out that Orla is now pregnant with puppies. Hooray! So it ends in this sort of nice little note of, okay, everything is fine right now. Ragnarok is coming, but it's fine for now. So there you go. If you would like to contact me anywhere on the internet, what you need to be looking for is purplebecca923. That's P-U-R-P-L-E-B-E-C-C-A 923. That is my username on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. That is also my email address, purplebecca923 at gmail.com, and purplebecca923.com is the website. So until next time, remember, education is fresh, learning can be fun. So go out there, create what you deserve, and fly with the penguins. Toodaloo!